This Wraith is getting tired of popping a wheelie everywhere that it wants to go. And of course, if it wants to steer to the left or to the right, well, it's SOL. Because I had, had broken some parts on it. Uh, I don't remember how long it's been, but we're going to finish this up. Or at least attempt to. So today, I'm going to build the metal SCX-10-2 axle from Vanquish that I had purchased. W when did that Wraith come out again ago? <laughs> yeah, so I got this, this Curry SCX-10-2 axle to add to the Wraith a long time ago and we had broken some parts uh we creamed the ring and pinion with a magnum motor and so i've had the ring and pinion uh, i've got the locker i've got the scx 10 2 housing i guess i could use the stock housing as well but oh no 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 i broke the stock housing that's right that is also a problem so today we're gonna put together this axle at least part of the way oh they have instructions and everything too so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna assemble this. I might even look at the instructions. And we're gonna get that rig going again. I've got enough rigs that don't work. And this one is so close, so close. All right, we're gonna start with number one. It's in, and we're gonna, we're gonna, we, get, we got a lot of stuff going on right here. We need this spool. I should check the prices that I purchased it at versus today's prices. Because in the last, I'm sure it's been more than two years, three, four. When did the the, the Wraith 1.9 come out? Y'all are going to have to let me know in the comments. That's uh, probably about how long ago I bought these axles. And the prices of raw materials are going up. Energy, of course, has been going up. Good old inflation. You know, they, they, they said that printing money wasn't going to cause inflation. No, no. Increase in money supply certainly doesn't cause inflation which is why we're going to print a whole bunch of money to get our ourself out of this uh these problems that we created for ourselves uh and then of course what was the net effect of this we we all know today that well the the inflation it it came along anyways but of course no it wasn't caused by the increase in money supply no 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 it was an increase in uh demand yes it was an increase in demand and supply just couldn't keep up so that's why prices went up at least that's what we were told because of modern monetary theory mmt good old mmt um totally getting off into the weeds here this is not what this is not what this was supposed to be about oh wow this is a this is an old locker it's only got three screws in it oh well that's what we're using that's what we're using. We got six uh, screw holes on this gear set here. <laughs> so that again tells you how long it's been. Maybe I should upgrade that. Nah. All right, we've shaken up our blue Loctite because of course, metal threaded into metal, we need some Loctite. And uh, let's, let's just talk about Loctite while we're at it. Do y'all know how Loctite cures? At least this type. Let me know in the comments. I know how Loctite cures. It's kind of, you know, my job to know these things. Oh. Oh. Are these screws too long? You know what? I've, I've, I've potentially gotten myself into a pickle. Oh, okay. it's, it's going in. It's going in. Using old stuff with new stuff, though, sometimes it, it gets problems. All right, so back to the Loctite. Loctite cures with free metal ions. Sometimes you might see it labeled as anaerobic, which would make you think that it cures in the absence of air. But what that really means is that it cures without the addition of air. But what it really needs is free metal ions. And that's what it uses to cure. Uh, so of course we wanna make sure that we don't get any into the teeth of these gears because it will set up and it will become a very hard glue-like item on the metal. 
But you can leave Loctite out in the open. You can even leave it in a, a sealed container. You know, there, there's no air getting inside this container, but it still doesn't solidify. That should be a, a clue that it's not just the lack of air, but it is the, the gain of free ions that helps us set. There we go. As many Duggas as I can get on such a small item. Yeah. All right, ring and pinion. Oh yeah, these hypoid gears, they're, they're weird. So here's our axle, boy, it looks good. This is early on when they figured out how to do weldment looking on here. So y'all, I'm sure y'all can't see on this, but y'all could look at the website. I'm sure they still have these up. And if they don't, then these are classics. But this little curry badge looks like it's welded on and they've actually got little, like, they, they basically go meh, 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 with a ball end mill and it looks like a weld bead. Really cool little detail. I don't know if anybody else is doing that in the industry. <laughs> Pardon me. I don't know if anybody else in the industry has been doing that yet. Uh, I'm sure at some point somebody's going to try to copy it, but I haven't seen it yet. Y'all tell me in the comments if you have seen it. All right, we got we got packages. We've got instructions that are telling me what I should be doing. Mm, one thing I should be doing is grabbing bearings from the other stuffs. These bearings, ah, oh, they look fine. They look great. All right, is that bearing? That bearing's already gone. We've got this bearing. Oh, both bearings. Sweet. And what kind of condition are these teeth in? Uh, kind of terrible. Already sharp. Oh yeah, I was running it with a gear missing or a tooth missing. So there, there, there's that. Uh, what was I saying? Oh uh, yes, about the underdrive. This is uh, this is an underdrive gear set that I'm installing. And the reason why I mentioned that is because the rear of the vehicle doesn't have that yet. And that means I'm going to have to do the same thing for the rear. Otherwise we'd have underdrive in the front and regular drive in the rear. Let me grab a little napkin. There we are. There's a little bit of, a little bit of metal shavings on this. There we go. Perfect. So we, uh, we, do this that's what we do aha and it used the stock size of things that's good that's good and i'm sure that outside bearing is going to fall out i'm sure of it we've got this ball bearing look at there would you just look at that just look at it now oh, we've got these these neat bearing blocks or pillow blocks or well I had them at least there we go kind of a neat design change used to be it was more of a clamshell to where you would have your bearing blocks essentially bolt into your housing instead of sliding into your housing and now that is not how it is now we have full blocks and the reason why that works out so well is that when you had the compression style you could actually over tighten them and depending on how tight you got it it would actually change your pinion mesh going in and out and that's not a good thing not a good thing at all so i'm guessing oh, i could just look at the instructions that are in front of me yeah this goes into the third member which is really cool and because of that since the since it goes into the third member your pinion mesh can't actually change your pinion is mounted to the third member your bearing blocks are mounted to the third member your ring and pinion are all mounted to the third member. So the only thing that could change spacing wise is how these line up with the shafts that are going in and out. And there's going to be a little bit of play on that. And they have, you know, universals or CVDs or whatever you want to call them on the end. So there is some misalignment that can happen with no problems. Honestly, really good design to move everything from inside the housing like if you look at the stock housing which is not in here never mind it is it has left this plane of existence any rate with the stock housing oh here it is right in front of my face with the stock housing 
that's what they have is you have those like clamshell style they bolt in your your ring well your ring and your pinion i guess is part of all of this but since it's kind of a clamshell design to hold your your ball bearings in if you screw it down too much especially with plastic it deforms it and it will actually change your pinion mesh no good it is not a good look so neat just a neat way that uh they got around that and still were able to have a scale looking axle i like how they also have them labeled as f9 uh bearing blocks or pillow blocks would it, would it, would it be a pillow block y'all are gonna have to let me know in the comments what it would be called all right uh we can only install it one way it looks like oh yeah that's smooth that is smooth now of course it's this one which size is this two millimeter get our loctite little double do you Speaking of little dabs will do you, I've been eating hot sauce with my breakfast here lately. Uh, I'm really not a person that eats hot stuff very often, but uh, I just got into using sriracha. Anybody else like their sriracha? <laughs> it's good stuff. Uh, it can get quite hot. It's, uh, it's definitely a little different for me, eating spicy things with breakfast, but... I've really been enjoying it. Usually it's just, you know, salt and pepper on some eggs and toast. And that's that's it. That's enough. Oh, does this thing got charge? No, it's telling me it doesn't have charge. Oh, well. It's already chucked up. I figure I may as well use it. I could also just use... All right, we got everything together. Well, almost everything. I wonder if I got it axle shafts for this you would think that i'd get axle shafts when i bought a whole new axle that's the time for another video uh, what we need to do now is of course let's see we'll, we'll add a little bit of lube this is some lube that i've had for whoa decades decades i forget the name of it it, it was uh, called like jam or, or butter or something. And you can see it's a mix of two different types. You know, I could I could always just jam some dielectric grease in there. I'm sure that'd work. It, it would actually work. It wouldn't be good by any means. What else could I use? Yeah, here we go. Little zip tie. It doesn't really take a whole bunch. But yeah, this stuff kind of looks like jam or jelly i guess it'd be jam or preserves it's got all those little like white probably like molybdenum in there so i'm just going to smear this in some teeth uh this is uh 833 so since we have an even and odd tooth count matching up together you can reliably say that if you smear this on just a small section of the teeth that over time it will actually disperse into all the teeth since it's a uh, even and odd geared together your every rotation you're going to have an advancement let's see what would it be one tooth i guess because uh, eight divides into 32 does it not i do believe so yep so every rotation your pinion gear would step back you know it'd be four uh, what is four and a four and an eighth or no uh yeah yeah four and an eighth rotation per revolution which whichever way you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying almost lost the bearing there we go it's feeling nice and smooth though it looks like it has embedded its way into all the teeth so we are good to go we can install this just look just look at it it just pops right on just pops right on there we go so we're going to look at the instructions uh it evidently wants me to screw in some short screws some short screws uh y'all are 
I'm sure I got them in the package, right? It does look like uh, much shorter screws. Aha, there they are. They're hiding from me. They're hiding in plain sight underneath the reflection of the lights. The lights in here are actually very bright. I'm sure you can't tell at home because the camera is adjusted to the brightness. So it doesn't look all blown out. There we go. There's one. These look like they're stainless. Neat. Two. Three. Uh, let's go see. And where's the fourth that's missing? Oh, it's inside one of these. Uh, pillow. Pillow? Ball pivots. Pivot ball? All right, now let's see. Do we have the right size? That's not the right size. Let me guess. The wrench that I just stole the handle from is the right size. Of course it is. Of course it is. We need a little bit more Loctite. Make sure you mix it up good. I don't want to have half baked Loctite. There we go. You know it's good when it squeezes out the bottom. A little bit there. And yeah. Well, it'll be good to get this going. It's been a while since I drove that rig, and honestly, that old Wraith 1.9 was one of my favorites because it wasn't the most capable rig. It was capable, but just big old boat sides, relatively small tires. It's a good time. It's a good time. I really enjoy it. So, yeah, we'll get it rolling. Obviously, it's been used very well. It's muddy. It's got the, the Magnum in it with a Crawlmaster BRXL ESE. But it does have a stock steering servo and all stock links. And I'm pretty sure I got new links for it. And if not, then I'll, I'll get some new links. Because those stock links are really noodly. Which, you know, it saves the servo. But at the same time, it also isn't very high performance. And as soon as I put a real steering servo on there, it's just going to... That's the best way to describe it. Just like that. I'm sure, I'm sure this mic picked that up a little too well. <laughs> Any of y'all got older brothers? The one thing that I remember my older brother doing all the time when I was growing up was that noise. But it wasn't just like... He knew that it annoyed me. So he would, uh, he would extend the noise as long as humanly possible. Which I'll, I'll give you a preview of that here in a second. <laughs> and it's funny, as an adult, thinking about it. It was not funny as a child, being tormented. But he'd, he, he would sit there. And, you know, we're talking me, 10 years old. But at some point, I gotta take a breath. <laughs> but he was good at holding his breath. And doing it literally for two minutes straight, maybe longer, it was, uh, you know, thinking back, quite amazing, of course, but uh, at the time, would drive a child absolutely bonkers. So yeah, good times from childhood. All right, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? We got, we got parts in here. I've got this together. We need to get... You know, I really feel like I should have gotten metal knuckles for this. I don't know why I didn't. I'll, let me just look in a box. I, I, I'm pretty sure that I don't have them. This is all tools in this one. With the exception of the items that are not tools. Uh, so we can, we can, you know, ignore those non-tools in the tool box. 
Let's see what's in here. Uh, I don't think it's anything of use, but there is another locker. I'm going to just throw that in there while I have found it. This is probably the old locker style too. Yep. Three holes. Three. Uh, what was I looking for? Crap. <laughs> uh, hey, look, the, the sample of the tiniest brushless motor ever. Totally lost that. Found it. Ooh, SPV2 chassis. Ooh, links. I asked earlier if I had gotten links for this. I think I did. Maybe. All right, what was I looking for again? I was looking for something. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Knuckles. Knuckles. So... Okay, okay. I'm not finding knuckles in here. We have this other package, which might. Okay, we've got a 90 millimeter shock set. 90 millimeter shock set. These are not assembled. Oh well. And then we have the rear housing, which of course doesn't have knuckles. I believe that this one does have integrated caps though. All right, so, well, that gets us a little further and it looks like I should probably upgrade my shafts. All I have is the stock dog bones. I could certainly install those again, but since I don't have aftermarket knuckles and I, you know, I could, I could technically put these knuckles back on, but what a waste, though, to, to put some plastic knuckles on. So we're one step closer, and I am going to make a list right now. I need knuckles. I should probably get a new link set for it. And uh, what was the other thing that, that I needed? It was knuckles and a link set and this ashtray, and that's all I need. That's all I need. So, well, that'll, that'll get us going. One step closer. I was hoping to get done today, but then realized, yeah, I didn't, I didn't buy knuckles for this guy. So, yeah, we'll just do that. Maybe I'll get some big brass knuckles or something like that. Something with a little, a little, uh, a little something on the outside. There we go. That's, that's exactly what I meant to say. And we'll get ourselves a little uh, plastic bag here so we don't lose our parts. We'll put it all into the same bin. Wow. Think about the ease that it's going to be the next time I pick this up if everything is in the same package. And I can just start it again. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's almost too easy to tell you the truth. I, I, I'm not going to know what to do with myself if it's just ready to start again. All right, so we're going to put this in there. We're going to put that in there. We're going to put this in there. We've got all of our stuff out of the bags. We've got our trash ready to go into the trash can. We're going to, we're just going to pretend we didn't get grease all over the end of that zip tie. It's going back into the pile where the zip ties go and we're done. Enough. Cool. All right, so we're just one more round of purchases. This is kind of how builds go. I'm not in a hurry. I hope you're not in a hurry either because usually that's when you make mistakes in life. So we're just gonna sit that right there. And uh, you know what? I've got a whole bunch of 80 millimeter shocks. Let me just make sure before I make an order, what length is this shock? Maybe I'll just pull out an 80 millimeter shock. And we can see, is 80 gonna fit or do I need something longer? If I do remember correctly, I had bought a set of hundreds and I put them on a rig and uh, I needed 80s. So I've got some, I've got some hundreds hiding around here somewhere. That's, uh, if I need to, I'll switch them out. But before we make an order, let's just see. These are 80s. These are the, uh, the, the Vanquish, the Incision scale shocks. They feel so good. I'm always a fan of these now. They're not quite as nice. Yeah, uh, looks like we need 90s on those. That's probably why I got those two bags of 90s as well. Uh, these aren't quite as good as, let, let's say, Element shocks. 
associated shocks, but, uh, you know, you know. All right, so uh, we got that, we got this, we got that, and if I remember correctly, a whole bunch of 80s. All the, like, look at all these 80s. I got a lot of 80s. I wanted to stock up, okay? Yeah, okay, so in the, in the same box as all the other parts, yeah, I did have these 90 millimeter shocks, so I do have that. They, they will need to be built. I'll need to find my shock oil. And then, evidently, I also got a new wheel set for it, too. So, uh, yeah, these, <laughs> these uh, KMC 1.9 tanks, those look really good. So, yeah, I love it when I buy parts and then I go back later. I'm like, I don't even remember what I bought. So that's neat. Cool. All right. Don't need shocks, but I do need shock oil. And we're going to get some knuckles on the outside and a new set of links. And then we'll be good. And that's all I need. Well, thanks for tuning in for another day of wrenching and finding out what's in my boxes. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.